Hello, and welcome to Lifeline. I'm your host, Apostle Brian Pruitt. Welcome to Season 3, <laughs> Episode 1 of Season 3. I hope you have enjoyed everything that you've heard thus far. And uh, today, we are going to tackle something that is happening uh, right now. And there's been a lot of talk about uh, revival. And so today, I want to kind of just uh, talk about the revival, or I should say, this revival doesn't belong to you. This revival does not belong to you. What do I mean by that? So if you are uh, definitely in the church arena, church community, you have always heard this term about revival. And for many uh, of us, Revival um, pretty much consisted of uh, coming together. It was always a special time of the year where we would come together and we would uh, meet up uh, at the local church either uh, Monday through Friday, you know, or Monday through Thursday, or maybe it was like a weekend. And it was usually during the evening time. You have a guest speaker. Uh, you have different singers come through and all that good stuff. And for the most part, that was the revival. You know, you had, uh, like I said, singing and all that. that. That's what revival was to us. And so, uh, really, we have, uh, I believe in the church, have... Um, really misunderstood what revival is. Revival is something that's really not something that you can plan. Okay. What we did before we planned services. Okay. We planned special services, but a revival is something that you cannot, you know, just put on the calendar nor, uh, something you can control. Okay. You can't dictate when it starts. You cannot dictate when it ends. It just happens. And it's something that only can be um, released and on, only can be orchestrated by the Spirit of God. So right now, uh, uh, we are seeing a revival that is taking place, I believe, is in Kentucky. I believe it's in Kentucky. And so um, this this revival has really just... Uh, taken off. I believe that these uh, group of people have come together. They were uh, doing a chapel service and it just has not stopped. It hasn't stopped. And it just gets, it just gets bigger and bigger. So you got on one side, uh, you have one side uh, of, of uh, the church, a group of people in the community, church community are like, oh man, this is great. Uh, this is awesome. You know, there's some uh, people who, uh, focus on the prophetic, you know, like I am, I focus a lot on the prophetic, <clears throat> meaning like what God is saying, what has he said, what is he saying? Uh, they brought up the uh, prophecy by a gentleman by the name of Bob Jones, who was a well-known prophet uh, at his time. And he gave a prophetic words, uh, basically saying that when the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, uh, to, um, it would only just be a signpost, uh, or just kind of, uh, just a, Hey, <laughs> uh, just a sign here that revival is coming not because of football, but just as something that you can look to and say, okay, Hey, you know, this is, uh, when this happens, you know, you'll know that what God wants to do, you know, as far as this revival is getting ready to take place now. So it didn't necessarily have anything to do with the chiefs, but, you know, you know, God would just use uh, certain things like that to get our attention. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, others thought that it would be it was the first time they won the Super Bowl. But what happened this time is that this revival that's taken place, it actually started like maybe like around, if I'm not mistaken, uh, before the Super Bowl or like the week of it just took off. And so. um so people, the prophetic community was looking at this like, man, this is this this must be it. You know, this is must be uh, what the Lord was talking about. And so as we speak right now, uh, 
which today is uh, February the 19th of 2023, that it is still going on. But then you have others on the other side of the coin that are like, you know, well, uh, you know, we got to be careful. We call revival. And well, you know, there's this, you know, certain things that are taking place and not quite sure. And, and, you know, well, you know, you don't need to go there and all experience of revival. Revival can happen where you are and all that. And I'm, and I'm, you know, here's what I learned. It's not about what people say is what they're not saying. It's not about what people say. It's about what they're not saying. It's always an undertone to uh, what uh, people are saying. And so um, my I'm going to read you something and I'll just kind of go from there. I want to read you something that I posted on uh, Facebook this morning uh, that just really just kind of just sparked this podcast for today. I put up this uh, post here. It says the reason why we don't see more revivals or moments when God move uh, is because when it happens, those who are spiritually wise in their own eyes start picking it apart with their own judgmental views. Leave it alone. Whatever God does, he defines. And for some reason, we have taken upon ourselves or <laughs> some of us have taken upon ourselves to um, be the philosophers of the body to say, yep, nope, this is no. Nope. Well, hold on. Wait, I don't know about this. Well, wait a minute before you really dive into this, 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 this could not be it. This could not be the the revival that uh, uh, or uh, revival that's of the Lord. And there's certain things you need to look for. And I'm like, man, please, can you all just give it a rest? It, it's it's we have we we have this thing where there are some of us in the body of Christ that we have this mentality that um, that that nothing is authentic until I say so. Nothing is real until I say that it is, you know, or I put my stamp of approval on it. And my question is, who are you? Who are you? (laughs) Who are you? You know, we, you know, Paul talked about this. He said one thing in everybody, one thing, everybody in the body of Christ got to remember you cannot think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. You know why Paul said that? It's because of situations like this, that that you can begin to move in such a way where you think who you are, okay, and everyone plays a role in the body, but you but you begin to think of yourself more than what you really are. And so I'm like, man, like leave it alone. And then the question is, is that, um, really what well, I should say this, not, not even so much of a question, but I think the the real issue is, is that we don't understand a lot of times when, when there are certain things and, you know, God moves in different ways and in, uh, in, in uh, uh, excuse me, unusual ways, uh, unconventional ways, we can be getting, Ugh, I don't know about that, right? So is it possible that it's just something because of your view? Is it possible because you have always seen something? Uh, we're talking about revival. You've always seen revival in a particular way. You've always seen revival, you know, happen this way and this, uh, you know, and it's supposed to be this, you know, and, and structure like this. But what if it doesn't happen like that? Does that not mean it's not revival? Does it not mean this of the Lord? You know, you question the fact that people are being healed and people are being delivered. You, you know, it's why well, I, I don't know about that. that. You know, and I'm just saying, don't be so quick to say it's not God. Maybe it's just something that you've never seen before. Remember, I said at the top of this that <laughs> that for some of us, revival means something totally different. The way we have seen it. We, for some of us, we've seen revival. Revival has been, like I said, 
a weekly service or a week where, we're, where we come together when we normally don't come together at a particular time and we have a guest speaker or guest speakers and they speak these powerful messages and all that good stuff. We sing, we lift the offering, and we go home and come back the next night and do it again. You know, and, and we say, oh, yeah, that's revival. But you cannot put God in the box. Only God can define what it is. Our job is simply just to latch on to what he's doing. Everybody, everybody that is a believer should have the spirit of God in them. And your spirit should be sensitive enough to know, okay, is this the Lord or not? The other thing is we don't pay attention. I've said this so many other times. I've said this so many times that, that the reason why we're, we have a hard time recognizing, you know, you know, when God is moving is because we don't listen. We don't listen. We have spent so much time. And I want to talk about these past couple of years now, these past couple of years. OK, we, we have spent so much time now arguing with prophets you know, and, and saying, well, you know, I don't know about the prophetic and I, the prophetic is doing this and all of that. And then to the point now that because you had a bad experience with the prophetic, now you have totally just shut it down to where now you are used to, okay, this is how, for example, this is how my service goes. And when the service goes like this, you know, we, we don't, you know, we don't spend time, you know, giving God a chance to speak. We get in there, we do the formalities and then we go home. We don't give God an opportunity to speak. Right. And so when we don't allow the prophetic to flow, we don't allow God to speak in his house or what is supposed to be his house. Then what happens is, is that we miss out on information or you miss out on prophetic words of what is to come and then now because we don't know then we start saying well that ain't god no now i'm not saying everything is god because it's not do you need to have discernment absolutely but before you before you whip out your gun and start talking about oh i'm gonna shoot this down because this ain't this ain't nothing about jesus whatever how do you know were you listening? Well, that couldn't po that couldn't possibly be a word from the Lord talking about, you know, uh, when the Chiefs uh, win the Super Bowl. How, how do you know? Did you hear the did you hear the prophetic word? Did you get understanding? Once again, let me just say to everybody, once again, the body. It's better to say I don't understand than to say this ain't God and start questioning about what is happening. Just say, I don't understand. Here's the other factor, the other layer <laughs> to this, to, to this cake <laughs> that some of us are in pride and I, excuse, excuse me, our pride won't allow us just simply say to simply say, I don't know. I'm not sure. Can you help me understand? Right? Instead of just jumping the gun. Okay? Because it is the right thing to do. It is the religious thing to do. You know, so understand. Understand that when revival comes, when when the move of the spirit comes, it is not yours. In other words, you are you are not the orchestrator orchestrator of it. You 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 are not the one that created it. You are not the one that said, OK, now is the time that this happened. No, only God can do that. Matter of fact, you could be one that is used by God. You I guarantee you there was somebody that heard the voice of the Lord. And said, OK, come on, let's come together. Let's just pray. And just come together and just, you know, seek the face of God. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God said, keep going, keep going, keep going. And because they were obedient, you know, now they begin to see this, this great move. But the thing is, is that you got to, you got to listen to the voice of the Lord. You got to listen to the voice of the Lord. You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention when he's speaking. 
Okay, I believe it's uh is uh uh second uh uh what is it? Uh is it um oh gosh, I'm trying to think of the name of the verse. It's in Chronicles. Uh Chronicles. I read it, I read it all the time. But uh I believe it's in uh uh Second Chronicles twenty twenty. I believe it's Second Chronicles twenty twenty. And it said it says his believe the Lord, so shall you be established, right? Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Yeah. Second Chronicles Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Believe the Lord, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. So you gotta believe the ones that the Lord have sent. You got to believe that God is even still speaking right now. And I'm not just talking about out of the Bible. Yes, we receive the word of God through the Logos, through the through the uh, uh, through the written word of God. But we have to receive the rhema. The rhema is simply the breath, the the uh, the breath of God, the the uh, um, it is the spirit wellspring of God. It is him speaking beyond the pages that we see in front of us by his spirit. Get that by his spirit. So when God tells you to do something, understand you're just being obedient. You're not the orchestrator of it. You're just doing what God is telling you to do. But then on the other side of the coin is, is that for those of you that did not hear that instruction, then listen, <laughs> before you say, well, you know, no, 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 it's not for you to say, oh, okay, that's God. And that's not, that's not for you to say. And another thing that you're going to have to deal with is another reality check. Another thing is sometimes it's jealousy and envy. In some cases it's pride. Another part of it is, is jealousy and envy. Well, you know, I should have been the one that started that. And uh, God, how can you use me or my church or, or, or where we are? Why there? How not here? Why not here? You, you know, once again, that's not your call. God chooses how he wants to move, when he wants to move and where he wants to move. And if the Lord is telling you to go there, then you go there. All right. So I'll just listen. The bottom line is you don't have a right to define this. You you don't have a right to okay, well this 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 ain't God. This ain't God. But wait a minute, bro, are you saying that we're not supposed to uh uh discern these things and 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 especially leaders, you know, uh discern these things and and let the people know when it's like listen. What I am saying is, is that we always are supposed to be sensitive to the Lord and and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Always, always, always will let us know when something is happening and is not of the Lord. He will just as he will let us know that when there's something that is happening of the Lord, but. The other thing is we got to go back to the listening part of it because the Holy Spirit will tell us about things to come. The Bible says that he searches the mind of God. All right. And the Holy Spirit will not say anything that the father has not said. So the Holy Spirit will tell us, OK, this is what's about to happen. He never leaves us clueless. He never has us in a place where we just don't know or like, Oh man, I just found this out. No, I've said this before. We don't get the news like the world get the news. The way the, the way the world finds out stuff is by the news media and, and other outlets like that by radio. No, 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 no. And when they get it, <laughs> they get it after everything has happened. Right. We get it before it happens. 
How do we get it before it happens? When we're spending time in prayer, when we're in gatherings, when we assemble ourselves together, you know, when we are come together just to seek the Lord, he'll, he'll start telling us stuff, the mind of God. So that when these things start taking place, these things like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah, I remember God said that. And then we, when we see these things start popping up, we know, oh, yeah, God told us that there was going to be some stuff. Look, remember what Jesus said? He said, listen, he said, there's going to be some wars. There's going to be some rumors of wars. And, you know, uh, 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 brother's going to turn against brother. Children's going to turn against the parents, all that. He said, listen, when all this stuff happened, you know, said, look, don't trip. The end has not come. It, what was he doing? He was saying, listen, I'm telling you what you're about to see. I'm telling you what you're about to see. But when this happens, you will know that even in some of these things taking place, it's all a part of the plan. But I'm also going to tell you what is not. See, God will not only tell you what is going to happen, but God also going to tell you, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you ahead of time what's me and what's not of me. All right. Why? Because it is not his will for us to walk aimlessly and it's not his will for us to walk in a place that now we are judging things. OK, we are judging based upon our own mind. OK, the Bible says in Proverbs that we are not to be wise in our own eyes and then and for many of us that's where we place our judgment we judge based upon what's off our own eyes our own thoughts and feelings and unresolved issues on the inside of us so he said to keep you from doing that because there will be ways and there'll be times that i will move in unconventional ways there'll be moments where i'll begin to move and speak like you never seen before, but I'm telling you now, it will be of me, right? So if we hear that, then we know. But if we're not listening and not paying attention, we could be, we could be literally finding ourselves judging something that God's hand is on. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, and just learned something from uh, what... Um, I shared this week and I appreciate you all just listening to uh, all of the podcasts and uh, continue just to just to uh, pour it in, go back, listen to it and just, you know, and just begin just to allow the Lord to speak to you. Let's continue to pray as well about what is taking place, what is happening, because now more than ever, we really do need a move from the Lord until next time. I'll see you later right here on Lifeline.